So let's get started, maybe? Yeah, sure. So maybe I'll just introduce myself. Yeah. My name is Jacob, you know, I'm from, uh, I'm an entrepreneur here from based, you know, in Poland. Um, I've been, you know, doing online businesses for like now over 20 years. I've built some of the top, uh, you know, uh, uh, biggest verticals in Poland. Uh, and, you know, recently for the last one and a half year, you know, I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of Mindgram, mental health and well-being platform. And I'm happy to tell you more about this and my journey. So uh, thanks, Jakub. Maybe uh, we can start very quickly off with, with some of that background. Yeah. Um, so what, what, how did you start your career in general, even before sort of doing that entrepreneurship part of the business? Uh, and then how did you move a little bit into sort of traders, next web? Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe you can give a very short version of that story and I'll get into more of the specifics on Minecraft. Sure, sure. So, you know, um, I started pretty you know, early when I was like 16, you know. Uh, my parents didn't have like a very good financial situation, so I decided like instead of playing games, you know, I will, um, you know, start to program. Mm -hmm. It was a very long time ago, uh, and uh, I've built some, you know, like a, I think I would call it now like SaaS for uh, bookstores in Poland. I was 16. I had to, you know, deal with these companies through my parents, you know, because I couldn't like assign, you know, agreements, and I just uh, had like um, several, um, uh, you know, publishing houses, you know, that, that bought this, you know, from me. Mm. And I was charging them on the monthly basis, you know. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and that was the start, you know. And uh, then for some time I used to, I, I, instead of going to studies, I, I, in fact, I dropped from the, you know, school. I just decided in the, after first year of the Warsaw University, management and marketing, mm. that doesn't make sense, you know. <laughs> and so after that, you know, I had the uh, experience, you know, working for the international company, which I think is, is as well pretty good. You know, um, I was um, I was the head of internet uh, uh, in Poland for the big uh, publishing house. You know, for classified publishing. You know, as you know, maybe classified were the, one of the first industries that transformed completely to digital. And there's at the moment there's no like classified papers. So the company was as well. It was like number one in the world in terms of you know classified, but it was like in a deep shit in terms of you know online digital. And uh, the Poland was very small in this group of 21 countries. You know, but. Uh, we are the best in the internet because we had like no budget, so we were like hacking SEO and so on. And this you, start, you had this sort of SEO background. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. So that that was you know, and I, I remember I was like on one conference I think in Tenerife for the company, and I was showing to other countries you know as like super young you know internet manager from Poland you know that if you type like Opel Astra you are you can pop up number one you know in the Google. So they were like super impressed at this time you could impress people with that. Uh, and I was invited by CEO to be head of digital for 21 countries when I was like 26. It was a, a, little, a little bit of luck, you know, but it gave me some, some. Yeah, it was. I was part of the executive team. The company was 20,000 people. He, I, I had to move to Paris, you know, which was not bad. You know, now I'm flying in one hour there, you know, as well to to see some of my old places when I leave. And uh, yeah, and that uh, and uh, and I was then with the company for uh, like uh, six uh, years. And after that, when I came back to Poland, I said, okay enough working for somebody you know else and started my own businesses in fact started internet incubator tour that started four businesses which was a mistake i don't recommend because at the end i was the ceo of four companies you know and uh, that was uh, <laughs> ah, this, this is not very good you know all of the businesses were as success, successful i sold them you know to virtual napolska one it was not at once i still have it's a digital marketing agency yeah, but managing four companies, I don't recommend to anybody. You know, that's if, if you care about your mental health and well-being, you know, that's not very, that, that not, not the best way to, you know, to go. Yeah, but I, I finally be, built resilience, you know, I think through all of the pain I had to go through <laughs> and all of the crisis, you know. And maybe like moving into men, mental health yeah. a little bit as well. So how, how did you then decide to move and do Mindgram? So what, what's the switch between, you know, that SEO kind of like marketing background to, to Mindgram, what made you, what's the motivation yeah. to do that? So, you know, so like my previous background, it wasn't like only marketing, you know, I was at this time, I was like the head of internet, so I had to like do everything, yeah, from strategy, sales, marketing, development, production, you know, and IT. Uh, you know, one of this project when I started, when I came back to Poland, it was a health website. Yeah, we've developed ABC Zdrowie PL. ABC Zdrowie that I sold then uh, to Virtual Polska, starting from scratch and selling as a number one. Uh, it's kind of like a WebMD connected with uh, Znany Lekarz, connected with some community. So it was uh, a lot of, uh, like, it was like very innovative, not only just uh, content. 
Um, and uh, and I saw, you know, how the health is popular on the internet. Yeah, because people we are looking, you know, in the internet uh, for health information. And when the pandemic, after selling these companies, I was, you know, I had like this over seven years experience in digital health. That was a very interesting topic, you know, for me. And I even decided that all of the next projects I'm going to do this in this because it's important, first of all, and it's uh, like exciting. It's as well you have a sense of the mission. Uh, and when the pandemic yeah, was, uh, you, you know, uh, it, it, when it started after the second wave, when we know that it's going to be for longer, uh, everyone is, started to talk, you know, how it's impacting our mental health, yeah? that we are isolated, you know, with fear at, uh, alone. And I said, OK, this is a great opportunity because, in fact, mental health is not it was not represented at all on the Internet. And I started, you know, like to dig. And uh, to uh, and I checked that all of these platforms, you know, in the US they were on the rise. In Europe there was almost no platform like that. The US is like much more advanced in terms of psychotherapy, so on. Yeah, and I said, okay, that's way to go. I had a pretty, you know, you know, I was a consultant for on it for Ringer Axel Springer for great money, you know, working two days a week, you know, just because I was like bored, you know. And I decided to drop off this and started my company to work again for free for 14 hours a day. You know, and uh, yeah, and but it started like that from the market need and as well like from my background and from the passion I have, you know, to 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 do something in health and to help people. So, I mean, so the, there is a bit of that mission driven po portion of it that sort of led you into employee well-being. Maybe you can tell a little bit about what MindGram does for people who don't know. So how does the product work? What do you guys do? Yeah, you know, so, you know, first of all, um, MindGram is a platform for um, mental, mental health and well-being, but as well like for development. We work only with the companies. It's a B2B. At the end, it's like B2B2C because it's like our users. The companies are buying access for their employees to our platform. Um, but before maybe I will tell about this, you know, the thing is that at the moment, you know, the, um, there's a crisis in mental health. Yeah, In all, all the continents, most of the countries, you know, uh, it was, um, and uh, and that impacts as well the companies, yeah, because the level of burnouts, the average in the world is over 50%, yeah, the younger groups like Generation Z, it's 60, like it's 56, 6%, uh, all of every quarter, there is, you know, the, these numbers are higher, uh, and we thought as well that, you know, the, the, the pandemic was the moment, you know, that all of these problems, existing problems, they started, you know, like to rise, uh, and then we thought, ah, maybe it's gonna be, you know, over, but uh, all of the experts say that the, the, um, the consequences of that, that's going to be like for another like maybe 10, 15 years. It's like post, uh, you know, uh, it, it's like PTSD, you know, after like living for so long in fear, you know, stress, uh, trauma, many people lost, uh, you know, their families and or some close ones. And additionally, you know, besides of that, you know, uh, we are facing other challenges like war in Ukraine with the effects and fear, the, you know, uh, the, now the financial crisis. You know, and some feel people, you know, the cost of living is higher. But as well, even this what you hear in the news that almost that next day is going to be like maybe nuclear war. So this is we are like living in like very crazy like times. <laughs> yeah, crazy times, you know, but as well, but it impacts our mental health a lot. And as well, employees, some of the our customers and some of the industries, they have over 85 percent of the burnout levels in their companies, like, for example, low uh, companies and financial institutions. It's a huge crisis. At the end, you know, they have they have like all of the rotation goes up, uh, you know, absenteeism. People take, uh, you know, medical leave even up to for six months because of the mental health. Um, or there's a presentation, presentation when you go to work, but you are not able to work. You know, it's the biggest uh, uh, cost for the companies about this. So it's like a huge crisis. So because of this and all of these effects, the companies decided and the public sector, public, public um, uh, health, you know, sector cannot uh, provide enough psychotherapy, psychiatrists, you know, in order to deal with the, all, all these problems. So this what compa companies did, they decided, okay, we will take care of that, you know, we will give access to our employees to solutions, you, you know, like that. Yeah, so, so, this is, uh, so this is, you know, what's the background, you know, why, why there's like a big rise of the mental health tech platforms. We in MindGram, as I said, we are focusing on um, B2B, working mainly with the enterprise customers. Uh, we focus as well on the prevention. Most of the platforms, there's like hundreds of mental health startups. Most of them, they're like B2C and as well they focus on psychotherapy. It's like a reaction. Yeah, When there is a problem, you can go to the psychotherapist, which is good, it's great. But this is, you know, addressing only a few percent of the employees. There's as well big stigma around, you know, that. 
And this is what we do. We focus on the prevention. Yeah, we do have, of course, as well, so, you know, we have hundreds of the psychotherapies and all of that, but we focus mainly on prevention to prevent it, to change, you know, which is very difficult. Uh, changing the baby. Maybe just to jump in, how do you do that from a, from a product we, perspective yeah, or sure. a process So we have an app, yeah, it's MindGram, yeah. it's an application. It's very holistic. It has prevention, early intervention and reaction. Prevention is like group workshops to teach you about, you know, emo your emotions, you know, how to manage stress, you know, how to better communicate, you know, not only in this work environment, but as well uh, with your children, with your, you know, wife, with your husband. Uh, and like to change the habits, you know, and the behavioral change, which is super difficult. Like any prevention, you know, is super difficult. Like if you think about the obesity, diabetes, you know, it's difficult. But anyway, we invest into that because, you know, at the end there's going to be not enough, you know, uh, cure doctors, you know, to, you know, to, to cure it. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, 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 so this is what we, what we do. We have these group workshops. We have uh, self-care programs so you can work with yourself, you know. Uh, on that, um, we have early intervention that you have, uh, like on the chat, on internal communicator in Mindgram, you have like um, eight specialists, a psychologist, you know, psychodietitian, a child uh, psychologist, a business mentor, financial advisor, even going beyond, you know, this mental health, because, you know, sometimes, you know, the root of your problems is that you have a difficult financial situation and you are going through some, uh, I don't know, very difficult to divorce, you know, so on. So we help people with that, with early intervention. So they know how to address this problem. Uh, and then we have a reaction. Yeah? So if you need a clinical, if you require a clinical care uh, and talk with the psychotherapist, we do have this as well. But the, the, the advantage is that we are like very holistic because we believe that you know, different things help different you know, people. And not everybody is ready for uh, psychotherapy. And as well, not everybody you know, uh, just believe in meditation, for example, like on some mindfulness. So we believe it has to be you know, holistic. And we help, and we do help as well companies you know, to communicate this. Yeah? To, uh, to, to address the stigma, to show them how they can communicate this within the organizations. Yeah, so this is how we do this. Uh, maybe going into the specifics of sort of uh, the product and, and, and the, the value prop, how, what do you think about, you know, defensibility within, within your sort of uh, area? So, you know, it, is it more about the network effects from the supply demand kind of a side where you have a lot of, you know, psychotherapists on, on your platform maybe, or is it, there's a lot to do with different parts of the product that make you different. What's the what's the main mode that you guys are sort of putting forward? Yeah. That's, that's a great question. You know, like we went through two financial runs. You know, like early uh, seat and late seat. So we want to try to keep it in seat. <laughs> so, however, you know, we rise almost uh, we rise over eight million euro in these two seat rounds. Uh, and uh, and I was asked this question a lot. The defensibility, especially for SaaS business. You know, so. Um, in, at the moment, in this, what we do, there's like not, not, not a lot of network effects, yeah, because so we do mainly this prevention, and okay, we have like a lot of psychotherapists, you know, uh, that gives us uh, possibility to, for the employees, you know, to have like next day appointments, but the defensibility is, and this is why we are so aggressive as well in terms of you know uh, fundraising and expansion, uh, not only in Poland because the company is one and a half month. One and a half year, <laughs> and it's one and a half year. It's very young, but we have well, like 100 customers almost at the moment. Brands like KPMG, Orange, Play, Carlsberg, you know, and most of the, our customers are enterprise class. We are covering 70,000, 70,000 employees. We have like under reach, and we are operating on two markets. And now, like we are launching Mexico, which, which two Poland, uh, Poland Spain, Spain, and now we are launching Latin America. And the way, and this is this is super, you know, uh, challenging. I would say. Uh, from the organizational point of view, we have fully remote companies, you know, how to grow, you know, so, you know, for, so fast. But the reason as well is uh, we, we, we want to be international. We need to be international because in order to provide the best service, you know, uh, we, we have to have a scale. Yeah, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be make, it may make sense, you know, like only for one market to have such a development, you know, a big team like, like we have. But the, the way why we, you know, go so fast is that it's very hard for the company that they will buy access to such a service to cancel because people are in some therapy process, you know, take, a, take, ba take away from your employee, you know, from your employees mental health solution when it helps, you know, people. Yeah. So it's very difficult. So, so the, there's some kind of, I would say like first mover advantage. Yeah. So you, yeah, we have like the strategy of like land and expand. So we are very aggressive. The, the same, it's the U S platforms, the platforms in US, they are doing this the same. There's like almost, um, you know, like I think seven platforms, they have, they're like, uh, um, they have, uh, you know, they are, they value over 1 billion. So, yeah. Okay. 
Fair point. Uh, in terms of, you, you mentioned that you raised the, the I think, or a 7 million euro seed, eight, right? Eight. With, with 8 million, with Credo and Market One, I yeah. think, was also participating. So with that, uh, you've talked about a little bit of the expansion plans across LATAM as well. Uh, what else do you want to do? Like, do you, will you guys be moving across more different markets or do you want to move across different uh, product features in terms of what you'll uh, expand? So maybe like a shorter version of the question, what should uh, people be expecting from you guys in 2023, for example? So uh, at the moment, like over 45% of the investment we are investing in product. I believe very much in this product live growth. The more investment in product, you know, the less you have to invest in marketing. And um, so we are investing now as well a lot of in data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning. I believe very much in that in digital health, all, all this data driven care, that's going to be the differentiation because based on that, you can per provide personalized solutions. Th that's as well one of the reasons that we are so holistic, you know, that when you have different uh, types of help and different as well contact, different issues you are addressing, you can uh, make a triage, yeah, like an assessment, like in the hospital if someone goes, and then you can provide the personalized, you know, um, path, you know, like through the, uh, through the, you know, the application. So definitely, you know, this, you know, era, one of our investors is as well, uh, you know, with this, you know, background. Uh, so, so it's super important for us. Of course, expansion is important. We, we, you know, the reason why we are expanding into the Spanish speaking markets, because the platform is very much like language oriented. Yeah. So if you have a Spanish platform, Spanish content and all of that, that's much easier. You know, mm -hmm. we look where, where is like the most of the people with this language. Yeah. So Poland is like not <laughs> on the top. This is for us like a like, like a laboratory, you know, then we look. Yeah, so you have, you have, you have like, you have like bro. DAG, yeah, German speaking yeah, market, yeah, exactly. DAG, but DAG is very difficult, you know, to expand because you have to be like German, you know, so you require much more money. You, everything has to be German, you know, the names, you know, you have, have a doctor title. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, you know, so it's not very, you know, easy. Maybe it's better to do this with, with acquisition. US is very much dominated and, it, and the English speaking, there's a lot of competition. So we decided to follow Mariusz Graleski, you know, way and, uh, and, and do this like, doc, uh, you know, the, the, the doc planner. Uh, this is why we pick up the Spain and we want to expand it, you know, so uh, in, in this, uh, in, on, on those markets. And uh, Latin America, for me, you know, I'm just terrified, you know, just now. We are now launching Mexico all of that because, you know, <laughs> This is, uh, sounds super exotic, you know, but uh, but apparently that's more, uh, it's like less scary than you think because those markets, for example, Latin, Latin America, there's no stigma about mental health. The, to go to the psychotherapist is like a social status, it's like in US. So, so yeah, like who, who would think about this, you know? So, and it's much, like, much less competition as well. Uh, maybe one final question before I let you go, yeah. being mindful of the time. So w w what's the success, you know, story for you guys uh, what, what kind of metrics do you want to achieve or what kind of you know goals milestones do you want to achieve over the next next year so i would say the the most successful story is like how many people will help because um, this mental health uh, problems you know yeah it's uh, people are dealing with like really you know uh, very super challenging you know life situations we have customers that come to us and they have suicides in the company. This is what, what we are talking about. So it's like pretty serious stuff. And you know, like with the primary health, if you have uh, some illness, even some s serious one, even some type of cancer, there is a lot of cures, medicines, doctors. There is no stigma about this. We are openly talk about this. But with mental health, a lot of people they suffer. They don't get for. They don't go for help because it's a lot of stigma. You know, they feel ashamed. Uh, they, uh, there is um, very poor access uh, to this. You have to wait for the psychotherapy in Poland, like over one and a half months, if you go to the public system. In Spain, over three months, you know, privately it's very expensive. So there's a lot of people, you know, that suffer, you know, and they don't get help. So, so I think that's the main motivation, you know, for that. Uh, yeah, and, you know, sometimes as well, you know, my goal is, you know, because building the mental health company, uh, you know, at such a fast, you know, pace, <laughs> not to, you know, have a problem yourself, <laughs> not to, <laughs> but uh, which is, which is difficult, you know, uh, which is difficult. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, but I think in terms of like a business, we want to expand to more markets, secure more customers, you know, and, but develop a product that is like providing the value. At the moment, we have very high engagement rate, you know, a very big, you know, interest, you know, from the companies, but 
at the end, this is what we, what we are going to do. We are going to, do, to measure the clinical effect of that, how we can reduce the burnout of the employees, how we can reduce all of these you know, symptoms. And if we achieve that and we can demonstrate that, I think that's, that we've done a good job. Maybe last thing as well is that um, this kind of industry is that this is like the first version of the, I would say, internet. You know, we are just, this what we do, that's in one or two years, that's going to be completely, you know, like a new one because everybody is like building on the, you know, like innovation. It's, uh, as I said, you know, this uh, prevention is very difficult. I believe the future is that everyone will have in their mobile phone like a support system for your mental health and for your development, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, we are like cyborgs, you know, but this what we do is like super, super, super new. It's like the first version of the VAP, this text, you know, which I remember when I used to, <laughs> this company, you know, and all of the, and it's great that investors, you put so much money into this because th that's going to build some new standards in terms of uh, mental health care and well-being. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, being mindful of the time, I know you have to leave. So thanks for that. Thanks.